Hi guys, welcome back to Tomb of Illumination. I've just done a previous video. I posted it yesterday or the day before, and then I, I, I had another idea how to explain it a little bit better. So I drew it all up, but I can only do videos when the house is empty, so I, I didn't get around to doing it. I'm about to do it now, even though someone is in the house. But uh, so the video must have gone up yesterday, and then someone amazingly connected connected it with another video he had seen recently. And this is the video, you guys. You have to watch this video. Uh, it's expanded in this post I put on Facebook here. It's all expanded, the whole thing. Hang on, I'll start again. Go back. It's all gone. Um, right, actually... I put a lot of good stuff on my Facebook, eh? You know, about creation. If you want to get on there, if you see that. Some interesting stuff I post. When it comes to me, I need to put it out there. And getting it on video is a bit tricky, so it's easy to put it on Facebook. But anyway, um, you need to watch this video, YouTube video. It's called The Human Heart, Anatomy and Function of the Human Heart. You can see there. See, make sure that's focusing. Now, basically it boils down to the fact that the heart is the vortex of creation. It's the same system. It's mind-blowing. It's not just a pump. It's a it's a vortex. So you've got to watch that video. Now I'll explain this, and then I'll get back to um, something else that's on here. Okay. So check out my previous video about the magnetic fields, what a magnetic cycle is, and that. And I talk about the the vortex of creation. Now. You see, this is this is Earth looking down on it. But anyway, I won't go back into that stuff. Just go check the video. Out. So here's the here's the vortex. If you look down, look down on it. The center, the center Arctic. You look down inside it. This is the this the S. It's the 3D S shape. That's the side view there. This is the spiral. This is the snake. This is the this is the cycle our stars take over 24 hours around the Earth. Because the vortex in the centre of the Earth is turning and it reflects out all the images. And the northern hemisphere is straight up into the northern sky. That's the night sky, that's the pattern you'll see. It's circular, because looking down in there, it's circular. They, uh, these stars don't drift off to the west. But this rotation is reflected out into this, this concave moisture atmosphere we have in the southern hemisphere so it actually gives a, a pattern like this all the way around the, the circumference the southern field of the earth right overall you get a cardioid it comes back in it's a cardioid shape around the south here because it's this image here in the center creates this cardioid that it would just sort of um, it sort of comes in and goes around like this and back in again and then back out. This is what the stars do over a night, over a day, sorry. But obviously you only see half of them because the other half's lost in the light of the sun during the day. But there's stars everywhere. And the sun moves across them. And this is where I got into trying to explain how the sun moves quicker than the stars. I mean, it's not a very good depiction of how it works, but it's, it's the, it's the ba basics, because each day the sun shoots ahead four minutes a day. So you get the four minutes extra here, you're going to get these stars shooting, filling in the void, coming forward, the nighttime stars. So it's, 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 it's trying to explain why the stars turn up early and why people think the stars are quicker, but they're not. When you think about it, the stars are doing this cycle here. It's a down in the vortex, spiralling up like this. And then they go back down, spiral up, back down. When the sun 
when the sun is at the center, right on the center here, just doing a circle. Just doing a circle. We look at these green lines are like the ecliptic plane that sits on top of the black hole horizon. All the planets move around those, but the sun's on the inside track. But down inside the vortex, the stars are doing this, this, this S, this here, right? So this, this, so imagine this is the northern hemisphere, because that's what you see in the northern hemisphere from the, from the equator to the, you know, right around the equator region, right out to the equator, the northern hemisphere, then the southern hemisphere is down here, right? So the southern hemisphere is out here. So as this turns, this, this turning image sends an image out here everywhere. There's always an image out here because it's reflected out. But as it's turning, you can imagine the star is turning all the way around like this, all the way around the south and back in. So it's only the southern hemisphere that has the star wandering west. Out, out of your star trail rotation you get on your horizon. Every man has that arc of horizon with the star trail. If you had a camera and was started filming it, centered on Sigma of Tantus, if you're out in the south, everybody has that rotation. But then you can time lapse it in uh, Star Tracker, and those stars that it seem to be going like this, they actually drift. That will always stay there in your arc of horizon. But with another camera, you can see them drifting off and they drift all the way around the earth to the west but they do not do that in the uh, center north because the center north is locked it's not drifting anywhere it's 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 centered centered the southern field is what drifts around that's the 100 percent proof that you do not live on a globe and no no scientist or physicist or astrophotographer has come back to prove me wrong because they can't So there's the, there's the lily, Lilith, lily. I put this in a video a couple of years ago, way back, right at the beginning. I've come back in a full circle. Okay. Lily, Lilith, it's the shape of the lily. The side view of the central vortex. Magnetic levitation up and down, basically, in the vortex. Now, when you go back and see that video I've just mentioned, it, it, it describes all this as, in the, as the human heart, the two, the two systems. So, it's, it's the up and down, up and down action. And it's due to this vortex. And I've, I've did a video and he talks about how you, you've got one cycle coming down like this, but you've got another one in the opposite, but they're still moving in the same direction. I've shown this in vortex water. When you vortex water, you'll see the bubbles spiraling down on the front face, but on the back face, they look, look like they're counter operating in a counter system. But they're all—it's still all going up and coming up and down like this. But it's all going in the one direction, isn't it? That's what he talks about. But that was mind blowing when he just—you just check it out. It's just mind blowing. And then once you've done that. Consider this, look up the word Lilith, okay, now this is mind blowing. Lilith meaning belonging to the night. So straight away you've got the stars of the night. Uh, comes from Arcadian word Lilithu, the feminine form of a word meaning demon or spirit. So it's feminine because all the, it's basically stars in the moon are all electrons, it's a feminine. And then they refer to demons or spirit because that's the whole that's the whole story of spiritual enlightenment. They made it sound as though it's scary and evil, but it's not. It's enlightenment. It's the divine spiritual event related to the celestial bodies. In Mesopotamian mythology, oh crikey, I've just taken a photo and it's only got half the details here. Hang on, I have to punch it in. <laughs> Et etymology of uh, Lilith, okay? Okay, etymology of Lilith. Uh, in Mesopotamian mythology, Lilith was the first wife of Adam. 
who was ultimately banished from the Garden of Eden for her disobedience. Now you've got to understand Lilith is the first state. It's the vortex. But the vortex is part of the central hyperboloid of the expressed toroidal field. So the hyperboloid or vortex center comes first, then it's exploded out in a toroidal field that creates our realm. We're the flat plane inside that toroidal field. Well, I've always stated way back that the atom, atom stands for atom. And the toroidal field is the, basically the shape of the atom. If you throw the hyperboloid in the center, it's the two systems. It's the, it's the rib cage. That's why Eve is in that story of taking a rib from atom, atom, because atom. And the rib well, the central part is in that video, you can check that video out, which I forgot to put on this post, is the three, he called it three, so I can't forget what he called it now, which is the system, the central system. And this bone in here, I've done a video on that as well. That's what I'm calling the solar plexus, it's related to the sun. So check that video out a few weeks back. So we've got Lilith as the first state, and then she was banished. So then it becomes the metaphysical, like in that video, that guy's video when he's describing the heart, you don't see that anymore. You, all, the, all the geometry is t taken away. So it then becomes metaphysical. So this is why they're saying she was banished from the Garden of Eden. She was banished. So you lose that part of it. It's all up here. It's not until you wake up, till you see all this stuff, or understand it basically, but I'm trying to explain it. Um, so there you go. That just blew me away. Lilith, the first state, which is basically, well there you go. If you take that shape into consideration, what's the first state? Alpha. Take the, the lowercase letter of the first first letter of the uh, Greek alphabet. Well, it looks a bit like that, doesn't it? The snake head up here. It's the first state. There's Lilith. Then we then it's creating. It's it's in here, hidden in here, outside our realm, the northern hemisphere, right to the Arctic center. We can't get in here. Then it's created our toroidal field. You can go all the way around here if you want, but it doesn't. Lift. It doesn't affect us, we're up here. Okay. Magi equals magic, the divine intervention. Magi. So, I hope I got that out clear, clear as anything. I think that's flipping awesome, my flower. So, spread the good news, guys. Thumbs up, or push a like, subscribe.